Hello, middle school students, and uh, welcome to Home Group. My name is John Rosensteel. I'm the pastor of Next Gen Ministries here at Blackhawk Church. And uh, I had the, the pleasure of speaking to you guys via video last semester. And uh, I'm excited to be back uh, this semester. So we're uh, in this sex series, not sure exactly what you guys are calling it. Uh, but John uh, kicked us off last week. And uh, just to kind of review what John said, uh, he said a couple of things uh, about sex. He said, one, uh, we uh, are sexual beings, that God created us as humans uh, to be sexual beings. Uh, two, he, he told us that sex is good. And if you read through the Bible and <clears throat> you look at how the Bible treats sex, uh, consistently uh, the Bible is positive about sex. God created sex for uh, our enjoyment. And third, he told us, which I think is very true at all ages, uh, but maybe particularly at your age, that sex uh, can be awkward. <laughs> and uh, again, that's true probably for your parents too, but especially true for middle school students who are just trying to uh, kind of get their minds around what sex is like and uh, as they, as they, uh, as they uh, kind of grow up and, uh, and figure out their way in the world. So today I want to talk to you guys about uh, this idea. As you enter school, especially public school, but you'll hear uh, this uh, from a lot of different, maybe adults in your life or other people, uh, this message about sex that you, as you go out in the world and you kind of participate in sex, possibly at some point, that you need to have safe sex. And maybe you've already heard that. Maybe you've seen commercials on it. Or certainly, uh, if you're in public school, they'll talk to you about the idea of having safe sex. I think it's a very important topic, and, uh, but it's one that I think is entirely misguided uh, the way that it is uh, normally handled. When I was in the 11th grade, uh, I remember this like yesterday. Uh, I was in the lunchroom, and it's probably like a lot of your lunchrooms, and uh, I was at a pretty big school, so there's hundreds of students uh, in this lunchroom. And that day I had my tray, and I was sitting at the end of one of the tables, and my tray was off the end of the table. And that day, the, the scrumptious lunch was Salisbury steak. I don't even know if you guys know what that is or you've had that anymore. It's kind of like mystery meat. And uh, they just throw a bunch of gravy on top, so it's really sloppy and messy. And then there was a large helping of mashed potatoes with, like, butter and, uh, and gravy on top of that. Really, really messy meals and something green, peas or green beans. So I had my tray on the end of the table, and it was a little bit off the table. And I was, I was really cutting my Salisbury steak like this because it was really hard and uh, wasn't very good to eat. And uh, as I was cutting it, I kind of leveraged the knife down in the entire tray. Uh, whoo, you can picture it. Uh, so Salisbury steak kind of stuck to my chest and gravy and mashed potatoes and peas dripping down my shirt. Now, of course, I'm sitting with my friends and uh, at that age, any opportunity to make light of somebody else, you take that. So everybody at the same time kind of turned at me and just started pointing and laughing and clapping their hands and slapping each other in the back, uh, making fun of me. I would have done the same thing probably. And then I started what was the longest walk of my life because I couldn't just sit there with Salisbury steak on my lap. I had to get up with my tray and uh, walk all the way across the cafeteria uh, to the place where you hand in the trays uh, to be clean. Super embarrassing. As I walked, every table turned, uh, friends that I knew, girls that I liked, pointing and laughing. Super embarrassing. I remember it in detail uh, like it was yesterday, even though it happened, ooh, how many years ago? 20 some years, I'm really old. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. Now, if you were to ask me if I remember what I ate for breakfast yesterday, pff, no way. Uh, so something happens to us when we uh, go through kind of uh, e extreme things, be it something embarrassing, a car accident, uh, something bad, something really good happens. Something happens physiologically with our brain, scientists tell us. It almost takes like a photo in our head. Our emotions get excited, our adrenaline gets pumping, and whoo, a photo is taken and then we'll remember it always. So key moments in your life that happen, you can remember them vividly, colors, smell, sounds. But everyday activities, you don't remember them very well at all. And this leads us back to our topic on sex. Obviously, uh, uh, when we have sex or we uh, do sexual things with another person, uh, our adrenaline's pumping, our emotions are involved. And uh, scientists tell us that very much we remember every one of those instances. And it's like a picture uh, being taken on a brain. So as I hear this topic about how to have safe sex, how to be sexually active and protect yourself, uh, oftentimes they're only talking about one thing, uh, physical protection how to protect yourself from getting pregnant, how to protect yourself from diseases. Very important topic, but uh, misguided because it misses the most important element of safe sex, and that's how to protect uh, our hearts. 
uh, the deepest parts of who we are, our emotions, our spirituality, our minds. Uh, the Bible refers to all that stuff as our hearts, the core essence of who we are. And you hardly ever hear anybody talking about uh, when you go into sexual encounters with someone else, how to protect your heart. And I think that's incredibly dangerous and misguided. Uh, and uh, I want to give this illustration. I took these two hearts yesterday, and uh, let's just pretend these two hearts are two people, and that these two people uh, decided to become sexually active. And uh, I glued these two hearts together yesterday. And uh, the Bible tells us, uh, the Bible says like this, sex is more than just skin on skin. And what the Bible is saying is sex is much more than just a physical act. Sex is an act that involves every part of who you are, physically, obviously, but deep down emotions, your spirit, every part of who you are. And you can't just have a sexual interaction with another human being and just kind of go your own way <clears throat> and say you protected yourself physically and you, and you have no damage. That's simply not possible because sex involves your hearts. So I would like to throw out the simple illustration that when you have sexual relations with another person, it's the same way as if you would be gluing these two hearts together. And let's just say those two people decide to go their own way because they're not married, they're not in a committed relationship. They just had sex and they decided to part. It would be the same thing as trying to rip these two hearts apart and make a clean break. And you see that it's virtually impossible as I'm trying to rip them apart, they're entwined together. And uh, even if I can get chunks off, uh, you see that it, it takes a piece of the other heart with it. I mean, these two hearts are really, really glued together. And I think that that's the same way uh, that sex bonds us together in the deepest parts of who we are. And when we're not in a committed relationship, we're not in a married relationship, and we just bail on each other, which happens all the time in the world and is depicted all the time in TV and movies and in music, uh, the idea is, well, if you protected yourself physically, you'll be okay. Uh, that's just a flat-out lie. Because when you have sex with somebody else, you bond in the deepest parts of who you are in your hearts. And your hearts are glued together with that person forever. And when you go your own way, you take a piece of that person with you. And we're just simply not made as humans to be giving away pieces of our heart uh, to one another. That's not how God intended sex uh, to happen and occur. So I want to throw out this idea to you. To practice safe sex, uh, we can only do so by protecting our hearts. Last week, John talked to you guys about the book of Genesis and when God created man and woman and, and he saw that man was alone and, and he created a woman. I think you guys remember that. And, and Genesis tells us that God took actually a rib from Adam and made woman, so a piece of the man and separated it out. And then right there in Genesis, he, he really talks about our idea of marriage in the earliest chapters of the Bible. Uh, Adam and Eve coming together as the first man and the woman in a committed relationship and uh, the beauty of what that is. And uh, there's great poetry in those early chapters of Genesis talking about the man and the woman coming back together. Uh, what was once apart, they became one again. Uh, so really marriage, the idea of marriage coming together and before friends and family, but most importantly, God in committing for a lifetime to be together is embedded in the very early chapters of the Bible. And it's God's plan for how we do life with one another, how we do love, how we do romance, and how we do uh, sex. Marriage is really uh, bringing back together what was once separated. Uh, it's a completion of sort. So it's within the safety of that married relationship, the Bible tells us, uh, that we can really have safe sex. Uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that the marriage bed, uh, so when you go to, to bed with your husband or wife when you get married, that bed should be pure. That's the exact words of the writer of Hebrews. And what that means is that when we get married to the person we find that we want to spend our life with and we make that uh, covenant agreement and that commitment to that other person before God, before the state of Wisconsin, before friends and family, that when we enter that relationship, uh, our purity should be intact. That we were not created by God to go have sex with a bunch of different other people and then get married. Uh, that safe sex can only happen uh, within the safety of that married relationship. Now, at your age, uh, high school, college, uh, whatever age it will be until you get married, trust me on this, you know, I'm kind of older now, I have some daughters, and uh, I, I've known a lot of kids through the years, you're going to fall in love probably many times. And you're going to have an instance, many instances probably, where that, where that uh, boy or that girl will look you in the eye and say, oh, I love you, we'll always be together, and they'll mean it uh, from the bottom of their heart. Uh, but until you take that step and you get married and you're committed, you can't really uh, trust that. And so even when you feel love and even when you're in these committed relationships outside of marriage, you can't risk 
uh, giving yourself sexually to that person because you're not committed for a lifetime. And the next day, that person could choose to go their own way. And oftentimes they do, and that's risky. So if we want to practice safe sex, uh, we've got to protect our hearts. And the Bible tells us the way to do that is to wait to have sex until we're in the safety of that married relationship that God created way back at the beginning of time in Genesis and has given us as the plan for how to have healthy relationships, healthy sex, and healthy families. Paul, the Apostle Paul, in his writings said we should stay clear of all sexual sins. And this Greek word that he uses, because the New Testament was written in Greek, is pornea. And uh, you might know a word that's uh, similar to that, uh, pornography. Uh, so when the Bible uh, defines sexual sins and tells us we should stay clear of them, uh, we should stay clear of all pornea until marriage, it's talking about much more than just intercourse between a man and a woman. It's talking about all manner of sexual uh, activities, uh, pretty much any kind of haphazard or thoughtless sexual uh, activities would be a way to kind of think about how the Bible uh, defines sex. So uh, this would be in our thought life, it could occur. This would be uh, touching someone inappropriately in a private area. Uh, this could be uh, masturbation. This could be pornography. Uh, the Bible's definition of sexual uh, sins covers all of those things, not just uh, intercourse. And uh, here's a principle for you. If we uh, start to delve into those things and explore those things outside uh, the safety of the married relationship, uh, the, the enjoyment that we might get from those things now will steal uh, from the, the sex that we're meant to have with our married partner later. Sex now basically steals from sex later. It totally um, affects it. I want to uh, use this illustration of a, of a gift here. Uh, nice looking gift, right? And let's pretend uh, that this gift uh, illustrates each of our sexual purity. Uh, obviously, I think that we're born into this world with our sexual purity uh, intact. And it's a gift, I think, that God gives us as our creator and that we're meant to give to that person that we enter a married relationship with, committed until death do us part. And then within the context of that relationship, it's totally safe to give that person and that person alone our sexual purity. It's safe because they're not going to bail on us. Uh, and God created us to give this awesome gift and enjoy it uh, with that other person. That's the real definition of safe sex. The sad part is, and we see this in movies and in television and in, in music, uh, that people begin to give away their gift early to people that they haven't committed to, that it's not safe at all uh, to give this gift away. It may feel good and they may think they're in love, but it's not safe because they're not in a committed relationship. That person could bail and often does at any moment. And we're left, as with the previous illustration, with kind of tattered, broken hearts. Uh, and this is another way of looking at it. So, you know, we enter in and we're dating in middle school or in high school, and we begin to fall in love or, or have feelings for someone else. And, and uh, we just let them maybe touch us inappropriate in, in a certain area of our bodies that we shouldn't, you know? And so that's it's just a little bit of opening the gift, right? It's not big. But later we fall more in love and we let that person maybe explore more and uh, do other things to us that we shouldn't. And then they bail and, or we bail, we go our other way. And then there's another person and another person. Like I said, we fall in love many times. Falling in love's fine. Uh, but until we commit to one another, only then is it safe to give our gift away. And maybe there comes that time that we really think we're in love and uh, we allow that person uh, to open our gift in the way that one person was only meant to open it. And uh, they open our gift and they look inside and they explore it and they take it to themselves and then what inevitably happens is they oftentimes bail. And they kind of give us, give us our, our gift back. And uh, here now is our, is our sexual purity all torn and tattered. And then what happens inevitably is, is that we do find that person. Uh, and we fall in love for real, and, uh, and we propose, or they propose, and it's beautiful, and it's wonderful. And, uh, and then we get to that point of, of that wedding night when uh, God intended us to give our gift, our beautiful gift, to that person and that person alone. And, and we're forced, oftentimes with shame and deep regret, to give the person that we love more than anybody in the world this gift. And middle school students, I... I know it's hard being your age and having to deal with these things, but I want to challenge you, uh, challenge you to hold strong 
and to practice safe sex by waiting until marriage, uh, not just falling for the lie that you can protect yourself physically and it will be okay. Uh, you've got to protect your heart. You can only practice safe sex by protecting your heart. And that only happens when you wait until that moment that you commit to that other person for a lifetime. I've married countless people. I've lost track now. And oftentimes I get the privilege of counseling the, the, the husband and the wife uh, before the marriage. And uh, we always wait to kind of the last section to talk about sex. And I always broach the subject by saying, hey, tell me about your sexual history and your past. And um, sometimes, sadly, one or both of them kind of lower their eyes. And uh, I see the shame and, and I see the regret. And, uh, and they admit to myself, they probably already had the conversation that, that they had given their gift away early. And uh, they're broken by it. Uh, it's, it's not a happy time. And then I get the opportunity as a pastor to tell them that God can redeem and make whole, and he can. And God takes really bad stuff and makes good stuff, and he will. Uh, but they've got an uphill journey in that regard. And then there's other times that uh, I bring up the subject and I kind of ask them, tell me about your sexual history and your sexual past. And they both get this like just beautiful look on their faces and that look of being in love with one another and kind of tears glisten in their eyes and they turn to each other and they grow closer and they hold hands and they say, you know, we've waited. Uh, we've kept our gift intact and we can't wait uh, to our wedding night to give ourselves fully to one another and one another alone. Ah, oh, it's such a beautiful moment. I get, I get tears in my eyes and it's, it's what I hope for my daughters. It's what I hope for you guys. It's what God intended. Uh, sex is good. God created it. He wants us to enjoy it. But to enjoy it and to have safe sex, we've got to protect our hearts. And to protect our hearts, we've got to wait uh, till we find that person. And we're committed enough, uh, not committed enough to have sex, but committed enough to be married to that person for a lifetime. Death do us part. And within the safety of that love relationship, you can give yourself fully as a gift to that other person. Uh, practice safe sex, middle school students, but do so not just protecting your bodies, but protecting your hearts. Wait. It's worth the wait.